Hi, this is Mark Matulet from Peter A. Silbermann Schule. And today I would like to introduce a few easy care plans to you. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the jade plant. Why easy care? Because I know some of you have, uh, or I've heard some of you say, I'm never at home, I have no time uh, for plans. And well, yes, of course, uh, you go to work in the morning and go to school at na uh, in the evening and uh, at the weekends, uh, you got to do your studying. So yes, uh, I believe you have no time, but that doesn't mean um, you shouldn't have any plants at home because they make the environment more beautiful and of course they're good for your microclimate at home and they're decorative decorative elements and they are uh, beautiful and nice companions to have so today we're going to be talking about this beautiful jade plant. I've had this plant for mm, 10, 11 years. Yes, probably this long. <coughs> and I had to rescue this from a miserable death in the spring because it was ailing at the end of the winter and it was dropping leaves which is quite unusual for uh, for this plant uh, it doesn't usually drop uh, leaves and when it does um, you should be alarmed or i was alarmed and i was alerted to take steps so when i felt I needed to transplant this or in first inspect the roots before uh, repotting. Actually, it was uh, I transplanted uh, the plant then. But um, when I inspected the roots, I realized all the roots had completely dried out. There were hardly any roots left on this plant, which explained why the plant was so miserable and so um, I was dropping leaves and it really looked uh, bad. It looked like a dying plant. So what I did was I removed all the dead roots and well tried a mineral mix. So look at the mineral mix um, here. This is a mineral mix of pumice, the white um, pebbles, the black pebbles, that's lava rock, the red uh, pebbles, uh, that's clay, granulated clay, and there is another mineral zeolith, uh, it is called, um, and you want to look up um, Zeolith, um, there's going to be a blog post um, uh, and you find uh, the word there and its spelling. So if you're interested in knowing what it is, ask Frau Dr. Klett or just look it up on the internet because it is, it is something that can store water and store nutrients but allows for aeration and uh, that's why I like this mix particularly. Pumice and lava rock are of volcanic origin of course. Clay is um, clay. Okay. Um, and the mix of this allows for excellent drainage which is absolutely necessary because this plant is a succulent and it stores water inside the stem and in the fleshy leaves. So there is a need to 
keep the plant rather on the dry side not let it dry out completely but this plant can go without water for two or three weeks um, and as you see here on the balcony it is sitting in a corner um, this is a well it's a high light to medium light um, place in the summer it gets the soft afternoon and evening light um, now it is maybe half an hour or maximum of one hour of late afternoon uh, sun it can take full sun but um, I've also seen it with sunburn so when if you have a south facing or southwest uh, facing balcony you and you move the plant out in the spring give it at least two or three weeks to acclimatize to the full sun and especially direct uh, sunlight um, but after that um, it can take full sun it's doing better in half shade though okay so uh, I was uh, saying that this is a succulent so it stores water in the stem and in the leaves and therefore a very well draining mix and a very well aerated um, uh, a potting mix would be um, the best potting mix uh, you can give this plant because um, then you run the lowest risk of overwatering and root rot. These plants, all succulents, all cacti, are prone to root rot, rot uh, when overwatered, and overwatering means you water, 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 and um, the potting mix retains too much moisture over too long a period of time and uh, this is something that succulents and cacti cannot take so give it a well draining mix um, if you choose a soil based mix you can use peat free all purpose uh, potting soil and add horticultural sand some people call it sharp sand uh, i call it horticultural sand and maybe some um, grit. Grit would be great and if the grit is something like pumice, lava rock, uh, clay pebbles uh, of this size, you're going to get a very well draining uh, mix uh, which allows the water to run through and then the soil and the roots to dry up. Actually I don't water, I water this plant well probably once every three weeks and the plant never shows any signs of neglect actually it doesn't want to be uh, it doesn't want to be fussed over um, so just leave it be for yeah three weeks or so in the summer during the hottest weeks of the day you may go down uh, to watering every two weeks or every 10 days depending on the temperatures uh, of your place balcony or indoor temperatures if they're up to let's say 26 uh, 27 degrees as my southwest facing uh, rooms then you may need to water a little more often but uh, other than that there's absolutely no need uh, to water this plant more frequently. When we're talking about fertilizing, well, this is a succulent, so it me, uh, which means uh, this plant can store nutrients, water and nutrients, um, and it doesn't require a lot of, uh, um, of fertilizing. I water, uh, I water, uh, no, I, fertilize my plant once a month or once every six weeks in most cases 
um, there's a situation when I start wondering when on earth did you fertilize this plant the last time? And if it dawns on me I can't remember fertilizing, then I think, oh, well, it may be a good idea uh, to water now and today, because if I don't, I might forget about uh, fertilizing again, and then the poor plant is going to go without fertilizing for another six, uh, six weeks. So, um, if you remember to fertilize it, um, great. If you forget it, um, the plant will not um, deteriorate and will not uh, fall sick, um, no. When you fertilize, follow, uh, look at the instructions on your fertilizer. I would always recommend using a liquid fertilizer. Look at the instructions and give it ha a half dose. So then you're on the safe side. If you give it the full dose of the recommended amount of fertilizer, uh, the roots my, may burn and uh, you would see a root damage caused by over fertilizing uh, on the leaves also because uh, then they will uh, turn black br or brown um, and probably fall off and the whole plant uh, will go limp and since this is not a wooden structure but this is kept uh, solid by water, um, the pl whole plant m may collapse. Okay, so don't over-fertilize. Over um, water at a three-week interval or at three-week intervals and fertilize maybe once a month or every, uh, once every six weeks um, and the plant will be fine. Pests. Yeah, I've had this pest. I've had a spider mite infection on this uh, plant. I had it once, but it was a bad infestation and um, that was one more incident when the plant was dropping leaves over a long period of time and I was wondering and at the beginning I couldn't make out the reasons until I found spider mites on my nerium oleander. So I could assume that this infestation uh, was spreading from my oleanders to this uh, jade plant and in fact it had spread. So spider mites are a pest, they are hard to make out and if you see a visible infestation then it is a late stage of infestation and it may be too late to save the plant. I was able to uh, save the plant. Um, it didn't like the remedy and the uh, therapy, but it bounced back to life, came, uh, came around again and well. Now the plant is happy and healthy. This is what it should look, look like. And if you give it um, cooler temperatures in the fall, you may be lucky to find this plant is in bloom probably at the end of January and, uh, or early February or begins to bloom at the end of February into uh, January into February. White, tiny little white flowers. And the whole plant is covered 
in those tiny little flowers. Um, the point is the plant needs to be at least, at least 10 years old. Young plants do not flower, old plants do, but as I said, either you buy an old plant if you want it to, uh, to bloom right away, or you are a patient uh, gardener and you keep the plant alive over a period of at least uh, 10 years. As I said, this one is, I think it is 12 years old. Um, so this could be, it may be uh, flowering next January, February, depending on whether it likes to or not. I don't know. Um, I believe I saw a tiny uh, flower last, no, not last, uh, the winter before. Well, if this is 12 and it was 10 then, yes, that would be the earliest um, season um, when this would start blooming. Okay, is this dangerous to pets? No, it isn't, because pets are not interesting. Uh, interested in any of these fleshy leathery uh, leaves they're not attractive to chew um, and therefore um, these are quite safe to pets um, anything else that I forgot no I don't think I did um, oh exposure did I say anything about exposure? Uh, when you move the plant inside, give it a highlight place. Um, in the winter, uh, during the winter season, it can even be um, direct uh, sunlight because uh, direct sunlight during the winter season is safe because it's weak um, and it's well, it does, uh, it doesn't have the power to. Uh, to 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 burn your plants. So give it a highlight place. Give it as much light as you can, um, uh, because that is what the plant wants and needs uh, in order to push out new bloom. Okay. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me. And I'll catch you in one of. The new videos to come. Bye. Bye.